So the crosscut sled is usually one of the first shot made jigs a woodworker makes to use with their table saw. It's like woodworking 101 I think. That was certainly the case with me and my last sled was built about four years ago. After lots of use, the kerf in the sled was no longer zero clearance, so my cuts weren't always crisp and it was becoming harder to keep the back fence square to the blade after so many back and forth trips across the blade. It was just plain worn out and I decided to make a new one, which I documented to share with you. Here I'm cutting my sled's base out of half inch Baltic birch. I think half inch ply works best for a few reasons. First it reduces the weight of the sled, which is good if you're making a larger sled. It also gives you more cutting depth above the surface of the sled and half inch Baltic birch is plenty rigid and stable. For both the front and back fences I use 3 quarter inch Baltic birch. The front fence for sure needs the extra rigidity as well as plenty of surface to fasten it to the base. It really doesn't take much material at all so this is a great use for scraps and off cuts from other projects. I made the front fence by gluing three strips of 3 quarter inch ply together. Three strips is a good number because it makes a beefy fence and gives you room to build in some T-track later. Because of the high solid wood ply count, Baltic birch is a really rigid and stable. But be careful with this glue up because you want to avoid creating a bow in the material as much as possible. Make sure to alternate the direction of your clamps across the fence to help with that. While the fence glue up dried, I worked on attaching runners to the base. I'm using aluminum runners for my sled. The main advantage to using them is that unlike wooden runners, they don't swell up and bind in the miter slots. They also have little set screws built in so I can adjust them exactly to fit my miter slot with no slop. Attaching aluminum runners is a bit of a process since you can't just throw them in the miter slot and attach them from the top like wooden runners. So here's how I accomplish the task. I started by laying washers down in the miter slots. This makes it so the runners sit just proud of the surface of the saw. I then laid down some double sided tape onto the runners. This is my secret weapon to keep the runners in place for the next step. Using the table saw fence as a square reference, I laid my sled base onto the runners and pressed down on the pressure sensitive tape to get it to stick. I then flipped the base over with the runners magically attached exactly where I need them to be. I used a center punch to mark the location of each screw position on the bottom of the sled. After that I could remove the runners and drill quarter inch holes at each screw location on the base. I then countersunk the holes on the top of the base so the screw sat flush with the surface. And since I hadn't moved the table saw fence, I could put the runners back in the miter slot and drop the base on top, adding the screws to attach the runners to the base. I tested to make sure it glided smoothly and adjusted any set screws in the runner according to any binding that I felt. Next I cut the kerf in the sled by slowly raising the blade through the sled and moving the sled back and forth making sure not to cut the sled completely in half just yet. Now with the base of the sled completed, I could turn my attention back to the fence. I ran the fence across the joiner and planer to square it up and to remove any glue squeeze out I got from the glue up. I then trimmed the ends at the miter saw. And a quick check with the straight edge ensured I had a flat fence. At this point I wanted to add T-Track to my fence, so I set the blade height to the thickness of my T-Track and cut out a dado by making one cut, adjusting my table saw fence, and repeating. Since I only had this one data to cut, I just found it quicker to use my regular blade rather than a dado stack and I repeated it until I snuck up on a perfect fit. Now since I have a saw stop table saw, I can't have the aluminum come in contact with the blade, so I needed to create a gap in the track. I marked where the gap needed to go and I cut the track using my miter saw. You can see in this slow-mo replay why wearing safety goggles is always a good idea. You wouldn't want that in your eye. Sliding the track back into the dado, I attached it by drilling pilot holes and securely attaching it with screws. Now with the fence positioned at the back of the sled, I fastened one end by drilling a pilot hole and inserting a 3 inch screw. This will give me a pivot point for doing the initial squaring of the fence. Now using a square, I adjusted the other side of the fence until it's square to my table saw blade. This is a tedious process, but you want to get it as close as you can. After all, the old saying, if it looks square, it's square, isn't really a saying at all. Okay, time out for a second, guys. 
I wanted to pause here to let you know that I use the five cut method for squaring up this crosscut sled. Now I'm not showing that here because I felt like there's enough material to warrant its own video, which I'm going to show you guys later. So just know in your head that that's what I did here and let's get back to the video. I then carefully secured the fence by using a clamp and added a second screw. After double checking that I was still square, I just drilled more pilot holes and added more screws. Approximately 45 should do the trick, plus or minus 40. Next I added the back fence to the sled. I positioned it using double sided tape and drilled and countersunk four holes and added screws. I then cut off any excess tape that was visible with my knife. One little detail that I addressed was to add a wooden filler piece into the gap that I created in the T-Track. I just glued in some hardwood and let it dry in place. The one creature comfort I added to my sled was putting a hardwood top on the fence. I had a scrap of walnut flooring that worked perfectly for this. I countersunk some holes, added glue and screws, and then put plugs into the holes to hide the screws. Once I flushed up the dowels by sanding them down, I reapplied some tried and true finish to the sanded area. Once you buff the finish, it looks like you were never there. Well, except for that highly visible plug. Finally, it was time to finish the sled by cutting it completely through. And if you wondered how messy it would be to pull your workpiece backwards across the saw blade, there you go. <laughs> what a mess. So there were just a couple more things I wanted my sled to have. The first was some way to measure my workpiece so I knew exactly where to put my stop blocks. I accomplished this by adding measuring tape to the base of the sled. The second thing was to add a blade guard to the back of the sled to protect my hand from accidentally hitting the blade. So to do this, I just fashioned a solid block out of 3 quarter inch ply scraps and glued it to the sled over the kerf line. One really key thing to remember is to only glue it to the fence and not to the base of the sled, otherwise you can kiss goodbye your ability to fine tune the squareness of the fence later. And the last thing I did was to add two holes in the sled so I can hang it in its new home on my jig wall, right where it belongs. <laughs> 